Our next talk will be about identity-based encryption resilient to continual auxiliary, auxiliary leakage by Chi Hon Yen, Sherman Chow, Ye Zhang, and Xu Ming Yu, and Chi will give the talk. resilient to uh, continual auxiliary leakage. And this is a joint work with uh, Sherman Chow, who is also here today, and Ye Zhan and Xu Ming Yu. Uh, in this presentation, I'll uh, firstly talk about uh, the problem that we tackled. And then uh, before we presenting our actual construction, we start with the identity-based encryption with auxiliary inputs using our techniques. And then finally, we will go to the uh, continual auxiliary leakage model. Uh, firstly, uh, the central notion of uh, modern cryptography relies on the secrecy of the secret key. However, in practice, this paradigm is subject to uh, some threats of the side channel attack like the uh, power analysis. Because uh, these attacks will try to uh, leak the secret keys, so it breaks the uh, notion of security in most crypto systems. So uh, leakage resilient cryptography was introduced to provide uh, some formal guarantees even when the secret key leaks. And in this talk, we only consider about the memory leakage. So uh, in these models, the adversary is allowed to specify an efficiently computable leakage function f, such that the adversary is, can obtain the outputs of f applied to the secrets. So it aims to model all the possible leakage in practice, including those side channel attacks. So a uh, major open problem in this field was uh, discussed in here Eurocrypt a few years ago. In, um, they they say, uh, state that it wants to allow for continuous unbound leakage and without additionally restricting its type. So there are two different main categories here. And there are a lot of uh, words follow on in these few years. And um, uh, there is a line of research on the uh, second, which is uh, the second restriction, which on the uh, types of leakage that are allowed. It. And, and firstly, uh, the model will restrict the output of the leakage function with less than L bits, where L is usually strictly smaller than the size of the secret key. So the leakage function cannot directly leak the secret key. And then later on, there is an improvement to uh, the leakage function that only allows to lower the entropy of the uh, secret key by less than L bits. So uh, as, uh, to sum up, L is considered as a fraction of the key, either in terms of bit size or the entropy. And the next, uh, we have the uh, bind to retrieval model proposed in uh, 2010. They allow the leakage is still in uh, L, but L is now considered as uh, system parameters. So the size of the secret key will increase with L. However, L does not affect the uh, proper key size, the communication, and the computation complexity. And in these models, we hope that uh, the attack is detected and stopped before leaking L bits. So, uh, but this may not be good enough because uh, it's quite difficult to stop those leakage after obtaining LBs. So therefore, the auxiliary input model was proposed in 2010. In this model, we consider any leakage function f that no polynomial time adversary can invert. For example, we can consider a one-way permutation. It's a kind of uh, leakage function that allowed in this auxiliary input. Because uh, by one, in one-way permutation, no polynomial time adversary can uh, we invert the permutation. But this one-way permutation is not allowed in the previous uh, relative leakage model because they will uh, leak the, uh, the whole secret key information theoretically. And of course, we have the uh, first proper key encryption scheme with auxiliary input proposed in 2010. And both this auxiliary input model and as well as the uh, relative leakage model, they are all bind the leakage throughout the entire lifetime of the secret key. So this only answer uh, half of the open cache questions that I've taught before. 
And the uh, second half of the open question that we talked before is about continual leakage. It means that uh, the uh, user will continually update or refresh his secret key, and uh, the adversary is allowed to obtain leakage uh, in each period of time, and leakage between different up between updates are still bounded. But overall, uh, in the long run, the uh, number of leakage is unbounded. So there are uh, quite a lot of different scheme work in this model in, sig in signature, identification, property encryption, and so on. And in this paper, we will uh, consider the identity-based encryption with auxiliary inputs. This is because uh, IBE has found many uh, applications like uh, anonymous IBE, uh, chosen cipher test security of public key encryption from IBE, and so on. And uh, IBE with uh, auxiliary input model uh, provide the uh, leakage resilient with the composition of other, those ID-based systems. As long as those systems are secure in the standard no leakage model, it is because we can always model those other ID-based schemes as some sort of leakage of the secret key. So another uh, adventure, af advantage of uh, auxiliary input model in IBE is that it can give a clean definition, which means that we are free from numeric bounds, such as the uh, number of bits that can be leaked from the master secret key. And compared with uh, the uh, current uh, papers with continual leakage resilient IBE, the, uh, the current papers only model the IBE uh, that consider leakage of the current secret key for a given time only. So in other words, after a user has uh, computed a new secret key uh, for the next time period, the leakage from the key update query is the last chance for the adversary to get it. So it implies that all secret keys should be uh, securely erased. Um, however, with those frequent secure erasure, it is uh, less disastrous to have the memory leakage. And this greatly diminishes the benefit offered from the uh, formal leakage resilient guarantees. And therefore, in this paper, we want to tackle the problem of allowing for continuous unbound leakage without additionally restricting the type of leakage we have. And there are uh, quite a few papers that work in either PKE or IBE, but they cannot um, tackle this problem completely. And our contribution is to, uh, firstly, is propose such a continual auxiliary leakage model. And we think we provide a minimal restriction is that uh, no polynomial time algorithm can use the leaked information to output a valid ID-based secret key. And in this model, uh, the adversary can leak from all refreshed master secret keys as well as the ID-based secret keys. So uh, this model is a cleaner security model because there is uh, no version numbers of the secret key compared with the previous models. And it may be the ultimate model for IBE. Um, before we are going to this uh, continual auxiliary leakage model, we first give the uh, first IBE that is secure in the presence of uh, auxiliary input only. So uh, we provide the ad ad adaptive security in the standard model. Uh, our scheme is based on static assumptions with uh, moderate costs in terms of cipher test size and computation complexity. And this all these nice features are inherited from uh, some previous schemes. And like those previous schemes in auxiliary input model, uh, we, we are based on the, uh, this uh, GL theorem. And firstly, uh, this uh, original GL theorem is defined over the uh, GF2 field. Is that uh, given some uninvertible function h and the uh, hash of e and a uniform random number y, the uh, inner product in GF2 is a pseudo random number. And the uh, modified GL a uh, theorem is that if there is one can distinguish the inner product from the uniform distribution, then we can find a uh, PPT algorithm that can invert the function h. So 
So uh, we want to build a uh, auxiliary input secure IBE. So firstly, we uh, start with uh, auxiliary input secure PKE. So in the PKE, uh, we have a lambda bit number used as the uh, secret key of this uh, PKE. And uh, in this model, we allow leaking an invertible function of the secret keys. And in, uh, in this scheme, the inner product of the secret key and the randomness of the cipher test will hide the message uh, based on the uh, modified GL theorem. If there is a distinguisher uh, that can distinguish between two message, encrypted messages, then it means that there exists an inverter that can uh, invert the uh, function in, time, in a time polynomial time. However, it is, uh, it is a contradiction to the definition because uh, it, the function leakage function should be uninvertible. However, we cannot directly apply this uh, PKE and turn it to IBE because uh, ID based secret key has certain structure. And firstly, it is not a resistor's random number based number. And secondly, the uh, secret random factors hidden in the uh, ID based secret key uh, are not chosen in a store domain. If it just uh, chosen from this small domain, then it will lead to a brute force attack. And next, uh, we try to uh, add the uh, leakage resilient IBE with the uh, auxiliary input secure PKE. But uh, this is not straightforward as well, because uh, in the uh, leakage resilient IBE, uh, we will uh, leak the uh, semi-functional keys in the simulation. So semi-functional key uh, is produced from a real key by n binding factors from uh, set P, where P is of size 2 to the lambda. So uh, since P is quite large, so by the uh, modified GL theorem, the inverter is inefficient. And therefore, we cannot uh, give a correct security proof. And in our paper, we give some countermeasures for those uh, problems. And notice that uh, these are uh, Countermeasures uh, only appears in the security proof, but not in the real scheme. And then uh, we will talk about the security model. So uh, the security model is quite similar to the uh, normal adaptive ID secure model for a chosen plain test attack for IBE. Um, the difference is that we have an additional leakage model, which takes an input of a function f in the family uh, capital F, and it will return the function applied on the master secret key as well as the uh, ID based secret key. And we do not allow any leakage oracle after the challenge phase. And we define the uh, family of uh, leakage, capital F, is that given the uh, master property key, the challenge ID, uh, the leakage output, and a set of uh, secret key lead from the key expression oracle, then uh, no PPT algorithm can output the uh, challenge, uh, the secret key of the challenge ID. And uh, what's the difference between our model and the length bound leakage model for IBE? Uh, is that uh, we combine two separate leakage oracles from the uh, length bound leakage uh, model previously. We allow leakage from the uh, master secret key as well as the uh, ID based secret key at the same time. And it, uh, we model it in this way because they may share the same randomness. And uh, moreover, we do not need to store the amount of leakage for master secret key and the ID based secret keys. And so we don't need a set of handles of key as in previous papers. So uh, this is the roadmap of our construction. And uh, we construct our uh, a scheme uh, following some previous works. And uh, firstly, we follow the uh, LW identified the IBE. Uh, they use the uh, dual system encryption technique for the security proof, which instantiate the uh, BBIBE in composite order group. And in, in that paper, the dual system is used for the adaptive ID security. And then uh, we also uh, try to use the uh, CDRW IBE. Uh, in that paper, the uh, single user secret key leakage is done through a single tag. And later on, uh, the LRW IBE is uh, they use a multiple test for a multiple leakage. 
And the ID base keys for undetermined ID is, uh, will be referred to the master secret key. And we will uh, try to use the, uh, those uh, techniques in this paper to construct our scheme. We use the uh, multiplexing idea as user key level, and then we try to uh, do it again as the uh, master key level. But uh, how to get uh, our leakage resilient and identify the security? Uh, the answer is that uh, we know how to fix everything by uh, dual, the dual system method because we can uh, use the dual system to construct some uh, fixed secret keys and we can uh, leak them. But we should be careful that uh, such a leaking should not uh, be spoiled the faking. Uh, this is because the correlation uh, between the uh, semi-functional objects is information theoretically hidden. Uh, by the definition of our leakage, because the leakage per key is suitably bounded. We have some uh, further design constraint. Firstly, uh, by the modified GL theorem, we should only use a small binding factor in the semi-functional keys. And secondly, we are relying on the information theoretic argument where the key is extracted. So we extend our one equation to a known argument in the LWIBE to 3M equation, 3M plus 2 unknown in our security proof. When the uh, secret key is leaked, an invertible function of the key can be created from an invertible function of those binding factors. And the inner product equal to zero in uh, the modified GL theorem will imply the exponent in the uh, subgroup is equal to zero. So it can be uh, used to simulate the uh, semi-functional keys. And our next contribution in this paper is to construct the first hierarchical IBE with auxiliary inputs. And of course, uh, the first IBE in continued auxiliary leakage model. And we extend our basic scheme to support the leakage of randomness during setup. We use in, uh, in that scheme, we use a lattice-based assumption uh, in our pairing-based construction So in, uh, and then uh, we will propose the continued auxiliary leakage model. Firstly, the setup is split into the uh, common reference string generation and the uh, master key generation algorithm. Uh, compared with uh, the model I taught previously, we add two um, additional oracle, which is called the update master key and the update user secret key. These two models are provided to the adversary as well in the security game. And we change the definition of the uh, leakage function family as well. So uh, we, uh, in the original and the model, the leakage function only applies on the master secret key as well as the ID base secret key. And now in our continued auxiliary leakage model, we allow the leakage uh, of the uh, list of master secret key and a list of ID base secret key as well. And those lists are containing those uh, keys that are ever produced. And additionally, our model can be modified to keep leakage during setup as well. Uh, from the construction, it is uh, relatively uh, similar to our basic model without continuous leakage. So uh, we just add the re-randomized re factor component in the, uh, in the cipher test as well as the secret keys. And if we want to extend our scheme to a hierarchical IBE, we just change the structure of the, uh, the components relates to the identity. And finally, uh, we give our extension to support the leakage during setup phase. So uh, in this, uh, in this set setup, uh, we have a matrix of V used as a randomness and some letter bits after J also as the randomness. And we define uh, the Q is as a product of those uh, matrix to uh, power the uh, alphas. So the master secret key is a pairing of these uh, numbers, and we have an uh, anchor piece of them in the scheme. And by this uh, matrix type uh, construction, we need to use uh, the lattice base assumption. And as a result, we need this, this that assumption in our security proof. 
And of course, our, uh, our security, uh, our public parameters will be uh, now in size O lambda, where lambda is the security parameters. And finally, uh, so uh, this is the end of uh, my presentation, and we would like to thank Alfred and Jonathan for the helpful comments. And um, this is the summary of our paper. So we can see that our uh, scheme provides uh, more tolerant to the leakage. And of course, uh, the complexity is slightly uh, more complex than the previous paper in TCC two, uh, 2000, 2011. But we hope that uh, it is not, we think it is still not too complex. And we think it allows more leakage. And that's the end of the presentation. And questions are welcomed. <laughs>